Now, moon and star, what is the meaning of this? What is this about a skit that I have to do? You see, Dagother, you're hot in the AR market. You've been hot in the AR market since 2023. And essentially what the skit is, is basically you're telling them about my podcast and how everyone should listen to it and review it for future updates. Anyways, I'm just going to leave you to it. Bye! Well, this is great. The multimedia fourth wall breaker leaves me to my own devices. Since I am left to do this myself, I'm going to make this quick since I have more important matters. If you like this podcast, be sure to review it on Spotify so more people can discover it. Also, consider sharing it on your other social media platforms. Lastly, before going, follow and subscribe to Wayne Z0207 on his social media sites. Okay, that's it. I imagine Nerva must be waiting for me at the sixth house. I'm out of here. See you, moon and star. In a tight crunch for scholarships, trying to get around the writer's block for your net video, we've got you covered. Welcome to Life of a Content Creating College Student, with your hosts, Wayne C. Hero 207 and Charlotte Wade. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. My name is Colton W. Hurst, also known as Wayne Z0207. On the internet, welcome to Season 2, Episode 9 of Life of a Content Creating College Student. Now, surprise, surprise, lo and behold, we were originally going to do this p- podcast recording without Charlotte since she was going to be a part of the top Leap Year Celebration at Oregon Tech this Thursday, and on, on the day this was recorded, from 4.30 to 6.30, meaning we would have been recording in the treehouse with Zoe Smiley as the recurring guest slash substitute co-host, and Professor Halverson as our new guest. However, guess what? That did not happen. See, we are unfortunate enough to live in what is known as the Northwest meaning we have crazy snowfall and mud seasons. For context, this is around the Oregon area. If you know what that's like, then you have a good idea of what we're going through right now. So, right now I'm cooped up at Rocky Point while waiting for any further updates regarding the weather situation, if it's going to snow super bad or if it's going to clear up overnight. But since we're here, why don't we delve into some content creating educational experience, shall we? Yes, let's do it. So to begin, the first thing that went well for this week. I had an order from Amazon arrive earlier than expected. On Friday, my melatonin, which helps me sleep now, and the book that I am going to read while being transported to DC arrived in the mail. If you recall, a lot was going on from episode 8. From the loss that our community has been facing to all the academic pressure. I've just been losing sleep from everything that has been happening right now. It was tough to focus on my studies from week 7 without losing sleep. Now, I have the solution to all of my restless nights. All it takes is two gummies and my restlessness and running thoughts disappear. I have never slept better in a long time, folks, believe me. And as a reminder, sleep can be instrumental in good performance creatively and academically. Not to mention, sleep is essential to your health. If you don't get the adequate amount of sleep each and every night, you can get physical diseases such as the cold or the flu. And when you get sick like that, it's kind of hard to recover and catch up on your studies. Believe me, I suffer from allergies every now and then. They are mild on a regular basis, but if the pollen gets bad, that's when it becomes a problem and that's when I can potentially miss class or even an entire college day. So you gotta make sure you get plenty of sleep every night, folks. Be sure you go to bed and wake up at the same time each morning. Avoid caffeine and substances 
and don't take naps after 3 p.m. to increase your sleep quality. Now, I can't go by without my mochas, folks, but I am on a good track record with not using any substances whatsoever. Don't do drugs, kids. And then, I have been taking some naps before 3, so I've been putting the habit of not taking naps after 3 into good practice, folks, and believe me. Those power naps can re-energize you if you've lost a ton of sleep, and I mean a ton of sleep. It's not just the amount, it's the quality that matters as well. The book that arrived in the mail is called Digital Marketing, Content Creation, Engaging Your Target Audience by John Lewis. And from what I've seen, uh, people have been saying it's an amazing book, that it's comprehensive. And it has all the details, the ins and outs of SEO, content personalization and segmentation, and many others. Well, I took a sneak peek into the book, and truth be told, critics are true to their word. John Lewis's book might just give you a competitive edge in the content creation mark. I re highly recommend this book if you want to learn more of those advanced techniques. I mean, this is stuff that I'm actually trying to figure out myself such as what is no referrer, or what is no show, or no opener, etc. You gotta experiment a little bit with the different keywords and the different functions that SEO has to offer. I already have a lot to learn from this book, folks, believe me. Second thing that went well, after finishing my second exam in macroeconomics, which I got a 48 out of 50 due to a grade curve, and the Business 215 and MIS 102 assignments despite the extensions, I rewarded myself for the sweet fruits of labor and took, hint hint, a spa day. Walmarts, don't get me wrong, may have a questionable reputation when it comes to self-checkouts, how they treat their workers, etc. But you can't deny that Walmart is notorious, and I mean notorious for having third-party businesses and franchises inside its stores, such as McDonald's or even Subway for that matter. Alongside having a hair salon, Walmart also has a nail salon and spa business that is inside their doors, just as you walk into the store and go through the checkouts. It was an oddly convenient location for Dad and I, since the epicenter was also close by. The experience was exhilarating. The lady who helped me was polite and understanding of us. She took her time and was gentle. And the pedicure, this is my first one by the way, I've never done one for that matter, folks, for context. The pedicure was very thorough. Not only did I get the chance to soak as originally intended, albeit only for the feet, nothing more, but I also got the full-blown treatment. A scrubbing, which proved a little ticklish, a nail trim, and even the lotion. Do not forget the lotion, that felt super good on the feet. Now, given, as time goes on, our ticklishness tends to disappear in areas of our body, even our feet for that matter, but that's not going to happen to me for a while, folks, so don't expect that ticklish side of me to go away sometime soon, but it will happen, folks, trust me. I know this from the experience of others. By the time we were finished, my feet's blood flow was beyond extravagant. I never imagined that my feet could get this kind of treatment. I have never imagined something like this before. Like, I was feeling refreshed, confident, and now I'm ready to go on and take care of the rest of my coursework. Finish this term strong, folks. I'm looking at finishing up whatever assignments I can and then focus on preparing for finals. That's coming up, folks, so make sure you study hard, but not too hard. Remember, workaholism is going around, and be sure you get that high-quality refresher on concepts that you might not otherwise uh, have remembered, or you think will not need to remember. Better safe than sorry, folks. So, that being said, my precious sleep has been coming back to me since I got the melatonin. I've even noticed a positive change in my mood, albeit still a little shaken from the loss our community is facing, but it's something. Not only that, but the spa day made me relaxed and comfortable in my skin. Literally. Again, 
ready to close out on this turn strong. However, this week, these two weeks for that matter, I was bombarded by mid exams at midterms. To be fair, I didn't have too much time to practice my delivery for Business 215's midterm presentation. I can't complain there, folks. However, the fact that my Chapter 3 exam in my MIS 102 class initially had a timer and I didn't even realize it before clicking Take the Quiz and my Eco 202 class had a Chapter 7 quiz and an exam that were happening around the same time, due to Sunday and Monday, respectively. Those things had me on Super Smash Bros. Sudden Death Mode. If you folks get the reference, which I am sure you do, you have a good idea of what that feels like, except my damage percentage was above 500%. For once, I could say workaholism was not the major root cause behind that type of burnout. Given, I was granted extensions for Assignment 6 in Business 215 and Week 7 Excel assignments in MIS 102. However, the relaxation I got were socializing with the folks in OIT Christian Fellowship and working out the tech rec. Those were the only forms of relaxation I ever got the chance to experience during week 7. It was that bad. Fortunately that week is over and I'm registered for spring classes totaling 18 credits with a compact schedule where I am not studying late at night. Make sure you have some sort of a clear sense of direction when you're making your schedules in college folks. Believe me, I have this sort of flexible schedule this term where my last class begins at 4, ends at 6.20. Believe me, you're going to feel tired late at night when you get home. Now, what do we take away from this, folks? Well, I can say this. Don't rush headfirst into an exam you're not prepared for. Instead, if there is a time limit that a professor would not normally impose, or circumstances that they would normally not impose, talk to them. The exam may have been imported from a previous version of the course. Talk to your instructors if you feel this may be the case. Communication always, always goes a long ways. This is why it's important to get to know your professors and sit in front of the class. Those were a few things that I learned in the Waritu workshop during my time in flight school at Oregon, T at Oregon Tech. Now, our random fact of the day. Every time you shuffle a randomized deck of cards, it is very likely that you have created the first ever arrangement of cards in that order in history. Based on 52 cards, there are 8.07 times 10 to the 67th possible arrangements of cards. Now believe me, that is a lot of chance, folks. I mean, believe me, I have experience with RNGs, random number generators. And that is especially evident in the various gameplay videos that I have done regarding pinball, especially Ghostbusters and Mustang, where one wrong shot and bam, you're in a mode you don't want to be in, such as upgrade multiball or upgrade scoring or psychokinetic energy frenzy without a single ladder mode to get to a wizard mode going on in the background. Believe me, if you have bad, R bad RNG, you're going to have a bad time. Now, what did I do as a college student in the past two weeks, you might ask? Well, I've lately been learning about the national debt and how politicians can manipulate economics before, during, and after our elections in Economics 202, we're now getting into the nitty gritty. And it seems I'll finish macroeconomics strong, despite a bit of a tough week five, six, and seven. And we finally shifted gears in Business 215, researching not the company Amazon itself, but its founder, Jeff Bezos, who is currently the executive chairman. In my most recent assignment that I did for uh, Business 215, uh, I actually took the liberty of photoshopping some of the images that I used to submit my infographic, that being the Amazon logo, to match the different diverse perspectives that Amazon is trying to incorporate into its corporate culture, such as Glamazon and Warriors at Amazon, simply by using Adobe Photoshop's generative AI tool. Now given, this is not, depending on your circumstances, this may or may not be plagiarism, depending 
on what exactly it is you're trying to accomplish and what choices you are given. For me, Adobe Photoshop's generative AI gives you choices whenever you put in a prompt, so you have a choice in the matter, so because you made that choice, you effectively created that piece of artwork that you are creating. There have been scandals regarding AI generative works in that in some cases AI violated copyright law. And that's actually something that I've read about in my intellectual property book. Albeit, I'm not going to get into the complexities of this. Just note, it's up to the courts to decide if the work was done by AI and who is exactly to blame in regards to works created by artificial intelligence in general. Anyways, MIS 102 involves the usual spreadsheet exercises, Business 349 is the usual storytelling from Professor Tassaro and reading and studying the concepts in the book, but Business 256, Business 256 provided a neat twist on things. The last software we are using for the course is Adobe InDesign, which is a culmination of Illustrator and Photoshop. Boy, Professor Halverson would have loved to talk about this topic. But anyways, this software is the jack of all trades, master of none. This software does not come with any AI features like Illustrator or Photoshop. Also, our final project is coming up for the course. We will be redoing our business cards, the flyer, and the trifold brochure we are designing right now in InDesign to culminate as our final for the course. Now given he has unpublished the assignment for week 6 because he did have to go for the... No, it was actually week 7 folks. Week 7. Live blooper. But I'm this... Anyways, he had to cancel class because he had to photograph for the etiquette dinner. Besides, these are LinkedIn profile pictures that we're talking about. How could he not be present for such an event? Besides, I'm sure he enjoyed having dinner with uh, fellow students and staff and faculty and all around a good time for everyone involved, which I will detail here in a moment. Aside from all the craziness happening as the term comes to a close, I have been meeting up with the professors that I'll be having for next term, some of whom will be carrying over from this term to next and some of whom I took in a prior course, but did not have for the previous term or longer. Needless to say, this will be an interesting beginning of spring term as I will be reuniting with various professors whom I've got to know, appreciate, and care for. I'm sure all of them will be pleased to see my return in digital marketing, technical report writing, pricing strategies, and project management. Professor DeSaro, Professor Emmerd, Professor Scheidegger and Professor Weidman, respectively, if you are tuning in, I'm glad to be your student for spring term. Looking forward to seeing you in class for spring term. Shout out to you for being such amazing professors and amazing instructors and being able to teach me concepts that I can apply in my regular day-to-day -day work as a creator. Anyways, principles of managerial accounting, however, will not, not have Professor Sandra Bailey she is retiring this term. However, they will have a new professor. And I am sure I will get along with them just fine, albeit I will not be happy to have to carry three items at one time once again. It was a pain the last term and it will be a pain this upcoming term. That being carrying my backpack, my laptop bag, and the infamous accounting binder from last term. The overall experience of having to carry so many items? 1 out of 10. Would not recommend. So the lessons that were taught. Because InDesign is not installed on the top two rows of the computers in Boivin 109, we will have to manually save our work from this point onward. To make matters worse, there is a possibility that now and then ITS would be doing a cleanup of files that we've downloaded and used during the course, making it harder for us to use them as the term nears its end. Rest assured, however, this will not stop me. That GeForce RTX laptop has 8 terabytes of storage. No file is going to be going deleted on my watch. At all, folks. I'm going to make double sure of that between 
the OneDrive system in OIT's database, and my own storage from my laptop. Now, let's explore the other side of this equation, content creation. Not only have I installed Open Vinyl Malfunction Free thanks to Zach Lore from Top Tuesday when Dr. Mark Newport was supposed to show up, which I have used to edit this episode, but I have also switched browsers. Introducing your friendly website for gamers and content creators, Opera GX. Rest assured, this is not a paid partnership as I have not gotten to this stage in my career yet, but hear me out. Opera GX is designed to be fast, secure, and reliable for gamers and content creators alike. It offers features like built-in ad blocking, battery optimization, and customizable themes that make it the perfect choice for people who spend a lot of time online. It was simple and easy for me to install, and I did it while compiling research for my Business 215 assignment when having to get past the irritating Cloudflare I am not a robot recaptcha on Microsoft Edge. I was able to transfer my data from my Microsoft Edge browsing as well as my extensions with ease. I could also connect my Messenger, Instagram, TikTok, and Discord accounts and access each platform instantaneously in the browser sidebar to the left. Additionally, Opera GX offers exclusive gaming deals and discounts that can enhance the gaming experience for our users. This feature allows gamers to access special offers and promotions directly within the browser, making it a convenient choice for gaming enthusiasts. Plus, you get one month of Discord Nitro for free as an Opera GX user. I never have to worry about switching between different applications or missing out on any gaming deal since Opera GX provides a seamless integration of multiple platforms and exclusive offers right at my fingertips. Just go to Opera GX's website and download the installer. The browser is free and easy to use. The link is in the description, folks. Now, outside of the new browser, I have been inviting people to the fourth wall breaker set. I do believe we're now at right around 5 to 10 members in the Discord server. I appreciate those of you who accepted the invitation and joined the server. I know the server is a little quiet at first glance, but things are going to pick up, and the community is going to be bustling. You folks are going to have the chance to get to know one another and develop a network unlike any other. A community of fourth wall breakers. Who would have imagined that? We're going to have so much fun chatting about various topics from the latest releases in a game franchise, movie developments, and gathering knowledge from other gamers and creators. I know all of us are going to make some good memories on this server. Remember to abide by the server rules, and if you see any troublemakers on the server, report suspicious activities to our moderators. Rick Rolling, Discord Raids, and the like are not going to be tolerated whatsoever. Now, Open Vino, at the time this episode is released, should have helped remove any inaudible parts of the recording for this podcast, and it should have toned down any parts that were too loud. AI tools are no joke, folks. When you have AI plugins, you know you're bound to make high-quality content that captivates the eyes and ears of the audience. Something I really am excited about is the potential releases of uh, different versions of the Intel Core Ultra NPU, or Neural Processing Unit. Intel Core Ultra is known as Project Meteor Lake. Imagine me being able to use Open Vinyl consistently on Windows 11 alongside an NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics card, being able to blur out the background, and use AI video and audio editing techniques, folks. Believe me. It's going to take creativity to a whole new level. But we're going to have to wait to see what future innovation offers because I don't think Amazon offers overpowered laptops like the one that I currently have that has an Intel Ultra 9 processor. Now, for our quote of the day, it's your outlook on life that counts. If you take yourself lightly and don't take yourself too seriously, pretty soon you can find the humor in our everyday lives. And sometimes it could be a lifesaver. This is a quote of the late Betty White, who passed away at 100 years old earlier. It's so sad that we're losing so many of our legends due to passing away 
or even retirement for that matter, folks. But what we can do is move on and prepare ourselves for future rising stars. Now, time to go into the events that I attended these past two weeks at college or in college clubs. I have attended yet another OIT Christian Fellowship meeting, where this time we discussed prayer as a relationship rather than as a shopping list. If you do not wish to hear this religious discussion, please skip to the time code shown. Again, we will not do this often. So we talked about uh, not necessarily asking God for things, but rather communicating with God through our prayers, communicating Him our intentions, communicating Him what we wish to see for the world around us. We have to establish that relationship with God and talk to Him regularly in order to be holy through Jesus, be holy through the Holy Spirit. And so, in that, it was a pretty good reminder that we develop a relationship with God the same way we do with other humans around us. Okay, for those of you who made it through to the time code skip, it's time to go to our next event. I also attended the Black History Museum on March 26th, which had many interesting artifacts containing huge portions of the history of African Americans. Diversity is not just in the cultures or the music and food, it's also in the heirlooms and fragile antiques. This means respecting other cultures also means respecting their property. Lesson learned, don't vandalize folks. Lastly, those of you who saw me the day before this episode was recorded knows that I went to the etiquette dinner hosted by Career Services every single year. This year, we were supposed to have Orchid Thai, but the plans had changed, and we actually had the basil chicken, just like we did last year, alongside potatoes and mixed vegetables. As well as some pasta. Those items were served on our dinner plates. However, the event still counted toward the leadership and diversity scholarship requirements, so that makes four events exceeding the requirements. Reason being, although Dr. Nagi could not attend in person, he did act as a keynote speaker in that conducting ourselves in a formal environment depends on the different cultures that we present ourselves to. For example, one action might not be ethical, whereas in another, not doing that action would be considered unethical. So we really have to consider who exactly we're talking to in these circumstances. The Etiquette Dinner was a fabulous event with opportunities to network and develop my skills, and especially the networking with potential collaborators, audience members, and even mentors. I met someone amazing by the name Heather Harper, the marketing program director at OIT. She's so amazing and she really appreciated my elevator pitch that I delivered to her. And so those of you who recently came in to my social media channels from the Etiquette Dinner after hearing about my work, welcome to the fan base. I hope you enjoy the content being broadcasted to you now and in the future. To round things up, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well did this help me get involved with the Oregon Tech or Climate Communities and why? I'm proud to say it's a 10. These events help me develop my understanding of myself and the world around me, especially with social communication skills. Such events are key to improving your well-being, personality, and skills. Don't take learning and development for granted, folks. And we are officially out of time for this episode, folks. So even though Charlotte, Zoe, and our guest, Professor Halverson, may not be in the room due to inclement weather, we're going to go ahead and give out our scholarly shoutouts. That's what they would have wanted for this episode. Now, first scholarly shoutout goes out to Amanda Thompson. Amanda is the new coordinator for the Basic Needs Hub, replacing Katie Peterson after she retired. 
During my bout of sleepless nights, I talked with Amanda about tea that could help me sleep, and she took the honors of going to Fred Meyer's and grabbing a whole supply of Yogi tea products, including the ever so desired bedtime tea. I got two packets, one for Thursday and Friday respectively during week seven, to scrape by until the melatonin came in day after fr Thursday. Thank you for holding me over until the gummies arrived. However, I didn't exactly get to use the tea on Thursday night. I had a lot going on in terms of academics, so. At least the gummies came in and saved my bacon. Just because something arrives early doesn't mean you can't get a substitute to hold yourself over and prepare yourself before what you need arrives. As the saying goes, like I said, Better safe than sorry. Our second scholarly shout out goes out to, sh to Zach Lore for installing Open Vino, which I have used to edit this episode. Shout out to you, Zach Lore. And now for our creator credits. This first creator credit goes to a creator that hasn't done something recently, but for something that they've done in the past. This creator goes by the name Zen Mode. During the pandemic, while everyone was stuck in their homes, people, especially gamers, needed some pleasant distractions on the internet to put their worries about the virus aside. One of these distractions was a game known as Among Us. Now, I understand that Among Us has become a dead game and meme, but let's take the time to understand the importance of this game in our lives, because we had to social distance. We had to stay home. We couldn't go up close and personal and welcome each other with open arms. So during the time Among Us was popular, Zen Mode would entertain his audience in various games from Among Us. Even games where there was other roles modded into the game, such as the Sheriff, Mayor, Morphling, and various other roles. His signature line in these videos were, If I die, this player is sus. His comedy and suspenseful storytelling were over the top in his videos. I was just recently watching them to feel a little bit of nostalgia. Thank you for the memories that were made during the pandemic Zen Mode. And our last creator credit goes to a newcomer in the Twitch streaming community, Strawberry Seraph. Strawberry Seraph, otherwise known as M Bar, is a newcomer, newcoming Twitch streamer who recently joined the Twitch platform. She does gaming and music streams while representing the LGBTQ plus community. I've known M since my freshman year at Mazama High School when she was president of the choir class. She was in her senior year. Strawberry Seraph, welcome to the Twitch community and congratulations. I look forward to seeing you around. So, thank you so much for tuning in. I know this was a little bit of a boring episode since inclement weather has prevented a gathering between Zoe Smiley, Professor Halverson, and myself. Would have been amazing, but I'm sure we're going to all of us are going to be able to get together for episode 10. So thank you folks so much for tuning in. Remember, there'll be disappointments in life, but we humans have the power to turn those disappointments into accomplishments. This is Colton W. Hurst, a.k.a. Wayne Z 207 Fourth Wall Breaking, One Man Army, signing out. See you in Season 2, Episode 10, before Finals Week, and the trip to D.C. Special thanks go to Ori Gun Institute of Technology. Celebrating 75 years of applied learning in Plummet, Oklahoma Candies. This has been a fourth wall breaking one man army production. <laughs>